Universal Vision, Soul Evolution and the Cosmic Plan by Scott Mandelker, Ph.D. Copyright 1999-2016, Scott Mandelker, editing by Rosemary Minden and Corinne Coster. All rights reserved. This book or any portion thereof may not be reproduced or used in any manner whatsoever without the express written permission of the author, except in the case of brief quotations embodied in critical reviews and certain other non-commercial uses permitted by copyright law. For permission requests, please write to the author at the email below, scott at scottmandelker.com. The Library of Congress catalogs the previous edition of this book as follows, Mandelker, Scott, Universal Vision, Soul Evolution and the Cosmic Plan, UV Way, San Francisco, California, ISBN number 0970-198507, Library of Congress, CCN number 9907-546, also by Scott Mandelker, Ph.D., From Elsewhere, Being E.T. in America, 1995, E.T. Souls, Cosmic Plan and Spiritual Path, Japan Seminar, 1997, and Book 3, Selected Essays, 2001-2010, in 2012. Contents Dedication Acknowledgement Introduction Section 1, The Cosmic Plan Part A, E.T. Souls and the UFO Presence Chapter 1, Doors and Definitions Chapter 2, E.T. Souls and the New Age. Chapter 3, Extraterrestrials Living on Earth. Chapter 4, The Sleeping E.T.'s Quiz. Chapter 5, The Wanderer's Alienation. Chapter 6, Where is Home? Chapter 7, A Matter of Purpose. Chapter 8, E.T. Earth History and Overview. Chapter 9, Inside the Confederation. Chapter 10, E.T.'s and the Law of Free Will, Chapter 11, The Last Lifetime, Chapter 12, Questions and Answers, Part B, Humanity and the Global Process, Chapter 13, New Age or Apocalypse, Chapter 14, Survival and the Earth Changes, Chapter 15, The Gulf Breeze Conference, Chapter 16, A Mistaken Gate, Chapter 17, why are they laughing? Chapter 18, A UFO in Phoenix. Chapter 19, The Children of Today. Chapter 20, Questions and Answers. Section 2, The Principles of Soul Evolution. Part A, Healing and Self-Transformation. Chapter 21, Self and God. Chapter 22, Reflections on Will. Chapter 23, The Higher Self. Chapter 24, Despair and Opportunity. Chapter 25, Diana's Service and Death. Chapter 26, To the Heart. Chapter 27, Shattering Armor 1. Chapter 28, Shattering Armor 2. Chapter 29, Applying Fertilizer. Part B, Buddhism and Meditation. Chapter 30, The Miracle of Education. Chapter 31, Moment to Moment. Chapter 32, In the Long Run. Chapter 33, The Royal Road. Chapter 34, Cooling Down. Chapter 35, Glory Be. Chapter 36, Joy in Mind. Chapter 37, Standing Alone. Chapter 38, Think Fast Wait. 39, Time and Forever. Chapter 40, Meditation Song. Chapter 41, Questions and Answers. Section 3, A Collection of Personal Stories. Chapter 42, Letters from the E.T. Journal. Chapter 43, Tales of E.T. Awakening. Appendices, Section 4. Appendix 1, An Epilogue. Appendix 2, On Counseling Abductees and Contactees. Appendix 3, The New E.T. Questionnaire. Appendix 4, A Basic Chart on Cosmic Plan. Appendix 5, 
Personal Counseling, Appendix 6, Concluding Quotations, Appendix 7, Biography, Essays, and Websites, Appendix 8, References. Dedication. This book is dedicated to all my teachers, both seen and unseen, appreciated and otherwise, for all your patience, acceptance, and ever-streaming light through the long cycles of all my earthly dreaming. With a special dedication to the wanderers pledged to universal service and comfort, no need to worry, each day is harvest. Acknowledgement. Sincere appreciation to my parents, grandmother, and uncle for all your love and trust, open-mindedness, and heartfelt desire that I be fulfilled in this lifetime. Special thanks to the readers and subscribers to the ET Journal. Your calling in the garden called forth the gardeners, tilling and retilling the ageless ground from which our book first grew. And final thanks to R.M. for your selfless giving, kind support, and flawless generosity. The resurrection of this book is due to you. Introduction In the following chapters, you will find a most unusual synthesis, a unique integration of many diverse traditions. On my own winding path, I've met many sources of wisdom, and like you, I've relied on the inner voice to try to learn from each of them. Today, they're blended in all that I teach. Yet, all these sources are, in fact, just elements of a single unified whole. What can be called the path of return, the path to the heart of self, or the principles of soul evolution. The purpose of this book is to unite these different perspectives and present a comprehensive and up-to-date guide to spiritual life on earth at the dawn of a new millennium. As you might agree, it is a special time. In my first book, From Elsewhere, Being E.T. in America, Dell Paperback 1996, I explored the personal world of those who consider themselves wanderers, walk-ins, or E.T. souls living in America. In it, 25 people from all walks of life described what it was like for them to realize that though they live on Earth, they are not from Earth. And in the final chapter, I told my own story, including the fact that I, too, share their extraterrestrial identity. I also consider myself a wanderer, a soul from elsewhere, here to assist the planet like millions of others among us. Perhaps the measure of how much things have changed in the years since release of that book is the fact that there my story was reserved for the end, placed inconspicuously in the second appendix. But here, I'm telling you up front, the author of this book is an E.T. soul. Gosh. Yet, despite dramatics, I don't think it's a big deal. As in all traditions of spiritual initiation, yesterday's grand revelation is just the floor for further growth today. Once I was publicly out of the E.T. closet, I found myself launched upon the larger task of teaching and counseling throughout the U.S. and overseas. For the past few years, I've been speaking regularly at UFO and New Age Expos in the United States, Japan, and Israel, as well as giving seminars and personal counseling. Along the way, I've met hundreds of people who also consider themselves E.T. souls. In many cases, they had had spiritual or visionary experiences identical to the people I interviewed for my first book, and they also fit a distinctive profile, versions of which you'll find in Section 1, Chapter 4, The Sleeping E.T.'s Quiz, as well as Appendix 3, The New E.T. Questionnaire. I believe that the E.T. community on Earth, which includes the vast majority of, quote, light workers, as well as many of those who consider themselves spiritual seekers in every nation, numbers close to 100 million. While a large part of my work has supported this particular community, this has become just the starting point of my work, as well as the launch pad for this book. To be ET or not ET, this is not the question. It's far more important that each of us find and then proceed in balance upon our own unique and universal spiritual path. Ironically, for most wanderers, it has almost nothing to do with E.T. matters. This is primarily due to the fact that most of them are actually unaware of their cosmic identity, and they are also trying hard to fit into human society. I certainly affirm the legitimacy and even the perfection of each of our paths. While it is my guess that if you were drawn to this book you may also be a wanderer or E.T. soul, 
It is certainly not my intention to try to persuade you. In my counseling, I often tell people, if it's true, you might as well know it. But if you honestly don't feel that exploring your possible ET roots is important to where you are today, then of course leave it alone. In writing this book, it's not my main goal at all to spark your ET awakening, though that may happen, and millions of wanderers will surely awaken to their identity in the next few years. My primary goal is to present the essential teachings of benevolent extraterrestrial groups and enlightened beings as far as I have realized them in my own life. To help you grasp their relevance and value, I have set these principles in the context of the world today, so they become practical to you on your own path. Let me explain the structure here. The first two sections of the book are divided into two parts each. In the first, I explore the metaphysics and cosmic purpose behind global UFO ET visitation and the presence of wanderers among us. From this foundation, you'll see that a vast cosmic drama of intergalactic evolution is the essential context in which all our personal growth and world service occurs. In the second section, I will connect some spiritual traditions that are rarely presented together, though their relationship is so close that they should never have been parted in the first place. In particular, I will discuss the fundamentals of self-healing and love, higher self and the chakras, Buddhism and meditation. I'll stress the practical application of these ideas in daily life. Some of the approaches I will integrate include Western integral psychology, healing body, mind, and spirit, Eastern mystic traditions, Chinese and Japanese Zen, Theravada and Tibetan Buddhism, Indian Vedanta and Chinese Taoism, and the ageless wisdom of theosophy as presented by Alice Bailey, and the channel teachings of an ET group named Ra. This last body of teachings, taken from the five volumes of question and answer sessions entitled The Law of One, also called the Raw Material, is considered by many wanderers, including myself, to be the finest source of channeled information in English. You'll find many quotations from this important source, and I believe that by the end of this book you will also come to appreciate their view. I am planning to make available a study guide to their first volume on my home page later on. Though my own spiritual path led me to years of formal training in U.S. and Asian Buddhist temples, and then on to earning a master's degree in integral counseling and a doctorate in East-West psychology, it was only when I could unite all these studies with those of my more cosmic teachers that the light of greater wisdom shone on all these paths as one. Through prolonged study and quiet meditation, I realized that the major teachings of all these diverse traditions were, in fact, scattered portions of one single unified whole. All real paths reveal the one path. This was also stated by Ra in their first contact with the group in Louisville, Kentucky that received their teachings in the early 1980s. They hinted that what is of most value is not some new fangled fast-track weekend workshop processed New Age spirituality. Before imparting their grand vision of cosmic unity, they stated their intentions most simply, quote, We hope to offer you a somewhat different slant upon the information which is always and ever the same. End quote. This book, Universal Vision, offers yet another, quote, somewhat different slant upon the different essential principles of the path which are always and ever the same. In fact, over the course of many years, I have learned that this is the only measure of the purity and potency of true spiritual information, its durability over time, which is why it is rightly called ageless wisdom. In the fall of 1995, at about the same time From Elsewhere was released, I also began writing and publishing a 10-page bi-monthly newsletter called the ET Journal. Almost immediately, it became a forum for dialogue on UFO and ET souls, cosmic plan and global change, and the principles and applications of spiritual teaching for personal growth. In the last three years, it became a forum for wanderers around the country, and a few dozen around the world, who shared their letters, questions, and personal stories. In the journal, we've been able to explore our connections with one another, our relationship to Earth and humanity, the purpose of our presence, and the ways of deepening love and wisdom. The ET Journal forms the matrix upon which this book is built, and most of the chapters here are drawn from its pages. Thus, the first section, the first part, 
of Section 1 concerns the specific issues of wanderers on Earth, achieving harmony within ourselves and human society, then offering love and light in world service. It also explores in depth the mind and intentions of the major ET groups now visiting the planet. In other words, UFO methods, means, and ultimate agendas. The second part of Section 1 explores the social implications of such cosmic forces, Earth changes, humanity, and the current global shift. After a chapter of Q&A, we'll then proceed to Section 2, where you'll find, quote, the heart of the matter. Here we will explore the timeless principles of the evolution of body, mind, and spirit, as well as some of the essential tools available to us on the ageless path to healing, enlightenment, and union with higher self, what Buddhists call non-duality, what Hindus call Godhead, Atman, True Self, or Satchit Ananda, being consciousness bliss. Before going further, perhaps a little background on Ra, my main source, will be helpful. Although I was already familiar with the teachings of many traditions, discovering the Law of One books was like finding a deep vein of pure gold. It quickly became the philosophical basis for the E.T. Journal, my personal learning, and all my teaching. I hold it in the highest esteem, and to be honest, I've lost interest in most other sources of channeled information in print. In the four main volumes, I found answers to my most pressing questions about life on Earth and wanderers, about positive and negative ET groups, and about the principles of balance, healing, and service. This material has proven to be a potent catalyst to my own body-mind-spirit activation, which is also a measure of its value. In my own process of studying, assimilating, systematizing, and finally conveying this information to others has been extremely transformative, as powerful as 20 years of Buddhist breath meditation. Together with the principles of ageless wisdom and Eastern religion, these have become the pillars of my own self-learning. For those unfamiliar with this source, it is useful to understand how the Law of One was born. For 20 years, Don Elkins, a former airline pilot and University of Louisville physics professor, conducted experiments in communication with disincarnate intelligence. His work began in 1961 with a small group of interested students and academics. After years of trial and error, they finally learned how to accurately receive and assess telepathic information. Eventually, Don was joined by Carla Ruckert, who later became the instrument or full trance channel for Ra. Carla also wrote a channeling handbook, which is available from her organization, LL Research. See the references in Appendix 7. Despite the efforts of Don and Carla, it was not until a third person, James McCarty, arrived in Louisville and joined their ongoing work that the circle was complete. Soon thereafter, they were contacted by a source that called itself Ra. And at that point, the quality of the information they were receiving changed dramatically. As if a circuit had finally been looped and a greater energy voltage could at last be delivered, abruptly, almost overnight, the clarity and potency of their material took a quantum leap forward. In contrast to most other channeling, their procedure was formal, solemn, and precise. It was never done in public, never done without prescribed ritual protection, and never intended for the widest possible audience. To maintain the raw contact, Carla had to be in full trance absorption, lying supine on a bed, swathed in blankets with special neck support, hooked up to microphones and no less than three tape recorders due to repeated malfunctioning. Don sat nearby asking the questions, while Jim remained in constant prayer, sending only love and light. Few outsiders ever sat in on their sessions, and Ra often cautioned them about the need to keep their desire to serve the Creator as pure as possible. In my experience, I have never met a more rigorous contact than this one. They never hit the New Age circuit, for many years never charged for their books, and never sought to build a following. Yet, over the years, many people have come to appreciate the gems they uncovered. From 1981 through 1984, Don, Carla, and Jim dedicated themselves full-time to maintaining the raw contact, which identified itself as a social memory complex, an oversoul group consciousness in which all members have shared awareness. Ra claims to have provided the basic teachings on healing, pyramids, 
crystals and initiation to the ancient Egyptians, and to have had direct contact with Pharaoh Akhenaten, also considered a wanderer, around the year 4000 BC. For more on this, see section 1, chapter 8, ET Earth History and Overview. They can be considered one of the major ET groups responsible for assisting the growth of humanity through the ages. Originally, the Ra group came from Venus, but now they claim to dwell in what is called Sixth Density, a state of unified being in which they no longer seek light, but rather have become light. This state corresponds to the awareness of Higher Self, associated with the Sixth Chakra in the human subtle body. Their real name, that is, whatever they called themselves before they came to Earth, is probably not Ra at all. I imagine they simply chose the name because it symbolized unity to the Egyptians, personified as the sun god that they worshipped as the one creator. In other words, the name suited Ra's nature and their basic purpose, offering what they call the Law of One, the teachings of cosmic unity. This is the main perspective I'll be sharing in this book. The four main volumes of the Law of One consist of over 100 question and answer sessions using the same format each time. Don formed the questions, Carla was the trance receiver or voice channel, and Jim was the scribe whose task was to take notes and support the other two in myriad ways. Each session began with a precisely formulated invocation for protection and ritual items that held special significance for Carla, such as the Christian Bible, censer, and a chalice of water, were carefully placed behind her head on a special table to empower their state of mind and remind them to be meticulous and vigilant. Understandably, Ra called their contact a narrow band transmission, and in fact, it was so narrow that Ra often corrected the group regarding the proper orientation of the ritual items, suggesting, for example, that they move the censer 0.4 degrees northeast. I have never seen this degree of extreme care in other channeled works, and it is a cosmic law that the purity of calling determines the purity of response. The late Dr. Andrija Puharic, friend and colleague of the psychic Yuri Geller, called it, quote, the best cosmic connection I've seen in my lifetime, end quote. I believe it's one of the most important spiritual transmissions in print. From the beginning, Ra emphasized that they were merely a humble messenger of the Law of One, offering the truth of non-duality, which they defined succinctly in the first session. In relation to self and the universe, our true nature and spiritual identity, they said, quote, You are not speaking of similar or somewhat like entities or things. You are everything, every being, every emotion, every event, every situation. You are unity. You are infinity. You are love light, light love, you are. This is the law of one. End quote. In the contact with Elkins, Rukert, and McCarty, Ra's goal was to, quote, lessen the distortions in human consciousness inspired by their previous somewhat naive attempts to help us. These efforts, primarily in Egypt, were later distorted for elitist purposes and co-opted by the selfish priestly caste around Akhenaten. Today, we can get an idea of Ra's commitment to the work from a statement they made. They note, in no uncertain terms, that the fidelity of Ra towards the attempt to remove distortions is total. Of this, I have no doubt. Therefore, they firmly emphasized essential principles, and never devolved into more sexy information to satisfy curiosity. When the receiving group asked questions that strayed into matters of transient importance, such as UFO cover-ups and conspiracies, facts and figures on ET races and galactic history, Ra noted time and again the limited value of such knowledge. Throughout the entire contact, they stressed the importance of seeking only the level of truth which can lead to genuine self-transformation, centered on the timeless principles of body-mind-spirit. Even the language they used was carefully chosen. For maximum precision, they often used archaic words and concepts far removed from the conscious vocabulary of anyone in the room. In this book, I will also stay tuned to the timeless principles of spiritual growth. Ra never intended their contact to be abstruse. They hoped simply to reveal the splendor of cosmic unity in a pure, undistorted form. Nevertheless, many readers do find their material quite challenging in its original presentation, and that's where this book comes in. 
The following chapters will integrate a great deal of their teachings, adapted to present conditions, and blended with my own practice and background in Eastern traditions. Ra even stated that, quote, very few can harmonize their vibrations with them. But nonetheless, I have found over the years many people can understand what they taught. My role is like a transducer or medium through which their universal vision can be made more personal, more relevant to modern life. If you have read my first book, My Own Story is Familiar. It's a journey that began with confusion and existential angst as a teenager, a condition extremely common among E.T. souls, progressed to intensive monasticism and Buddhist meditation in my 20s, went on to academic study and later work in counseling and East-West psychology, and finally arrived at my own E.T. roots. Only then could I integrate the lessons of this journey in my own teaching and counseling. Yet, the heart of my path has been Buddhist meditation and wide spiritual study, which is probably why I'm not content to be boxed in the role of spokesman for the E.T. souls. That job is far too narrow, and in fact, these days I have less and less interest in UFO matters at all. For those who are wanderers, realizing E.T. identity is just the first step, and after you know it's true for yourself, you need to move on to more universal concerns. E.T. or otherwise, the greater work is developing our full potential, the body-mind-spirit, which leads inevitably to greater self-fulfillment and greater ability to be dynamic and centered in service to others. This book is offered in just that spirit, centered on the essentials as much as possible, integrating the practical concerns of life on earth at the start of the 21st century, and directed towards the major spiritual goals of soul evolution, blossoming the flower of balanced love wisdom, and moving towards joy and union with all there is, in other words, full enlightenment. On the eternal path we all walk together. There is no high or low, no right or wrong, and the total power of the infinite creator is always here. Filled with this light, there is glory everywhere.